Okay, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. What we're going to take a look at today is the web UI for the ASUS RT N66U. We've already uh, got it set up. We've logged in. You can see there's some information right on the top here. You've got uh, it is in up the operational mode is wireless router. You can click on this and it'll take you to where you can change that. Um, this is firmware. We're actually up to date on the firmware. And here's your two different SSIDs. Right now we have active two different ones. We have a 5 gigahertz and a 2.4 gigahertz. So both of those, you can quickly see what those are. If you just click either one of these tabs, it'll bring you back and forth to each one. Um, this is your network map page, as you can see right here. It's, it's got everything you need to just show you exactly what's going on. It'll show you how many clients are connected, what type of security level you have. And as you hover over each one, you can actually see what's going on with it. So if we do that, you can see it'll show you what the IP address of that is, the client status, same thing with this, same thing with the internet. It'll show you the internet speed, what's going on, IP addresses, all of that in the gateway. So and it'll show you how long your IP lease is, gonna, is, is good for. If you have a USB device connected to the RT uh, N66U, it's going to show up here. You can do the same thing. Click on it. It'll show you what's going on. Next tab down is the guest network. Right now, we don't have any guest networks enabled. But if you were to set one up, you can see you have a total of six. This is part of that eight SSIDs that you can set up. So you can set up one. And go ahead and click on enable it's actually going to pop up here go through a little bit of processing it'll open up the next configuration screen and that'll show us exactly what we need to get a guest network set up this is a segmented separated network that's not going to be part of your regular admin network it's kind of a nice feature uh, you want to put the kids on their own setup you can set that up here um, you can give it its own ssid its own type of uh, encryption how long uh, you know what you want it the the encryption type if, let's say we want to set this up to WPA or WPA2. Uh, this is going to give us our options, AES. You set up the pre-shared key. You can actually say how long you want this enabled for. Let's say you just want to set up a temporary one in your house for eight hours. You want some people to come over and be able to use it. Maybe you got a guest coming in. You can set this up right here, and that will actually give you an option to turn this off automatically when you're done with it. If you want to access the intranet, that's your admin network, you can check that here. You can turn it on, turn it off. Um, it's, it's a great way to set up sort of a vendor style network or again, I guess network if you have somebody coming over and you want them to have access to the internet, but you don't want them to have access to anything else in your house. You can get this set up really quickly. Um, of course, if you want to disable it, just come back in and turn it off by clicking on the disable button. Go through the same kind of processing, come out on the other side, everything's turned off and you're back to having that single um, mode kind of dual band network. Uh, you, again, you can set it up for 2.4 gigahertz or for 5 gigahertz. Uh, depending on how you want to access the traffic. This is going to be great not only for residential users, but also kind of bleeds over into that small office home office as well as even for uh, smaller businesses. So we'll move on. And next one is going to be traffic management. Here you can set up ASUS's uh, kind of their quick QoS. You turn it on, it's going to give you an option. It'll, you can test your, uh, set your upload and download bandwidth, uh, megabits per second, kilobits per second. And that's going to give you your basic uh, how much you have and then you can set up the different types of priority uh, there's some that are already set up so you would set that up and you can list who you want to set this with uh, automatic mode is going to automatically set that up uh, user defined user defined QoS rules or QoS priorities that's going to change and you can set these up here uh, to change exactly what you've got the QoS rules uh, you set up a service and you give it the different priority these are going to be based off of uh, the amount of bandwidth you have available, port, and uh, also protocol type. So we'll go ahead and back back out of that. And then, of course, under traffic monitor, here's where you can actually see what you've got going in and out. Wireless, wired, internet, the different types of traffic coming in and out. So it's kind of a nice feature that you can watch and monitor exactly what's going on in your network. And if you want to see um, different points or peaks in the performance, you can do that just by clicking on it and it'll map that point and tell you exactly what speed is going through there. Moving on to the next, we have parental control, which is another great feature that they've got here. So you would set up a client, pick it out of the ones that are actually connected, and then you can either add or delete. So, and you can set up time limits, anything that you need here. So, and you also have a nice tutorial video you can click on to get that taken care of um, if you need to know a little bit further information. Again, you have USB. Uh, it's got the AI disk, uh, which allows you to share files on USB directly through the internet. Um, so if you have a USB disk here, you can share it out to clients that are outside of your network. Servers, you can um, allow, set up a 
you know, universal plug and play, iTunes, FTP, and Samba, network printers, 3G and 4G. This is great because you can throw a, a USB 3G modem or 4G modem in here. And what this will allow you to do is if your wired internet, let's say your ISP goes down, you still have connectivity through a 3G or a 4G uh, wireless device. Download Master, this is gonna be an installer. This lets you install files from the internet onto a, U, a USB connected uh, device. AI Cloud, um, this is one of ASUS's new uh, uh, applications that they've got. You can actually set this up to run. As you can see, you have three different things you can set up. You have Smart Sync, that'll sync different devices, um, your different products. Let's say you have an ASUS tablet or an ASUS laptop or something like that. You can use that Smart Sync to sync the items that you have plugged in via USB with your laptop or with your tablet. Smart Access lets you get into those files and Cloud Disk. Uh, let you set up a USB storage, um, then it sets it up, you know, you would be able to connect to it as if it's cloud storage. So it, it's kind of a nice feature if you want to set up a private cloud for you. Um, they do have some recommendations, you know, you need to have broadband, so dial-up isn't going to work, or some of your basic uh, types of uh, DSL are not going to work either. And next, uh, we have all our advanced settings. Wireless, this is going to give you your, you know, again, more advanced options for wireless. You have the wireless protected setup, you have bridge mode. So if you wanted to set this up in bridge mode, this is the wireless distribution system where you can have multiple access points that all act as one SSID and they're capable of sending signals back and forth. You'd have one connected to the internet or to your uh, local area network, and then the other ones connect to this wire wirelessly. The downside here is that, of course, you end up with, uh, losing speed. You, you end up with about half the band, aggregate bandwidth going back and forth. All right, we move on to the LAN. You set up your DHCP server. You set up any routes that you want. Uh, IPTV. You can configure the I IPTV settings here. Uh, switch control. Enable jumbo frame. Enable hardware acceleration. You have wide area network settings. You can set up dual WAN. That allows you to set up um, another port and route that out to the to the internet basically so you would have a backup port triggers this is when traffic you know comes knocking at the door it'll open it up on an on-demand basis virtual servers when you are when you're here you can set up a service let's say you have a mail server on the inside and allow that traffic to pass through dmz allows you to set up a computer with a public ip address or with an ip address that's reachable that gets it outside of the secure internal firewall and of course uh dynamic dns when you enable this, you're going to need to set it up who, through who your provider is. Uh, companies like DenDNS.com, they, they do this. And then you have different pass-throughs, point-to-point uh, -point tunneling protocol, layer two tunneling protocol. All of these pass through automatically. Um, they get through there because they're, you want to send from inside and you want to make sure that traffic passes back through so it can reach the services here. SIP is going to be things like uh, Skype or Link. IPv6 lets you turn IPv6 on or off. Um, right now, you know, for the most part, you're going to leave this off because IPv6 is not really enabled. If some people may start using this in their internal networks, this will allow IPv6 encapsulation, or you can just set up native IPv6 on this, which is a, actually nice. It's sort of a forward-thinking thing. Um, you can also set up a VPN server. You can set up a VPN tunnel, create a point-to-point -point tunneling protocol server here so that somebody can, you can connect into your house using the VPN. Um, and again, they say set up uh, dynamic DNS if you want to go ahead and use this from outside. Uh, VPN details, broadcast support disabled, authentication mode, what type of authentication do you want to use? MS chap version 2, um, MPPE encryption, uh, connected DNS server automatically. These are all features that are going to get you inside the network. And you also have an option for an IP pool uh, that puts you in your own subnet for access inside the network. And then of course you have uh, the VPN server status. Firewall, this is what protects you from external threats. Inside here you can set up uh, in, you know, disabling or enabling uh, denial of service attack protection. You can log packet types. Right now it says nothing. If you wanna log uh, dropped and, or accepted or both, you can do that. Respond to ping from the WAN side. This is good because if somebody does get your IP address, it, it makes it look like it's just a black hole on the other side. You can also set up URL filters. You can block URLs depending on who they are so somebody can't reach them. Uh, you can set up a keyword filter if you don't want somebody to browse to certain sites that have access to, you know, that 
display, let's say drugs, sex, something like that, and you can set that up and it keeps people from getting there. Network services filter. Here you can set up a blacklist or you can actually set up a whitelist and allow certain services to come through. Let's say you don't want anybody to be able to download their email uh, to a client inside your network. You could actually block port 25 or any of the applications, Telnet, FTP, you can block the web and you can set up a time limitation to block this. So it's kind of a nice, uh, nice setup there. Administration is gonna be, can set up the different types of configurations. If you want this to act as a router, that's with the full firewall and everything else, you set it up. Repeater mode is just what it says. When you set it up in repeater mode, it's just designed to connect to another wireless access point, pull your information in and pass it on to your client. Access point mode means it's just an access point. Connects to another firewall, comes in and becomes just an access point for your network. Now, system. System is going to give you information about the, you know, you can set the password, you can set your time zone, um, wireless protection if you want it on or off, remote logging server if you have one. This is just going to be exactly what it says. It's system options for, your, for this router. Firmware update. If you've got an update, you can down that and you know, install it. You can check if your current firmware is up to date by just clicking on check. Then of course you can also save settings and restore them back and forth. Let's say you do update a firmware. We always recommend that you save settings before you update your firmware so that if something happens, you can always restore from an older version. And of course your system log. This is gonna show you all the activity that's going on there. You got uh, general log, wireless log, DHCP leases, IPv6, routing tables, port forwarding, Connections. This is going to show you everything that's actually connected into this. And then, of course, you have some network tools. If you want to ping somebody, you can go ahead and ping. If you want to trace route, NS lookup. Trace route is kind of a nice one. So it can let you know if there's any problems going through. So it's just going to find its way. All right, Netstat. You also have options for Netstat here which is nice, Netstat, your network address uh, translation. This is some good diagnostic tools to let you know if you have any problems between you, the router, and the internet. Of course, you also have Wake on LAN. You can set this up, or you can send information out there to wake PCs up directly from this firewall. So that covers the majority of what we've got going on here. Of course, you have your quick internet setup, which we've shown you the, uh, what that looks like in static mode. You can also click here and see what's going on with the guest network, the LAN, USB, do you have a printer enabled, you have different languages that this supports, logout, reboot. ASUS has done a really good job on tightening up their UI. Um, some of their older UIs, while they were functional, they tended to be slow. Um, they've done a great job on speeding things up here. I think they've learned some lessons from their uh, UEFI BIOSes and how quickly those were running in order to get this much faster than what we've seen from them in the past. So that wraps it up for the RTN66U um, web UI and configuration utility. We're gonna now dive into some performance and see exactly how fast this is, and uh, we'll give that back to you. As always, if you like this video, be sure to click on the like button, make sure you share it with your friends, and be sure you subscribe to stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.